Hello there, everyone. My name's Andrew. And I'm Cassie. And this is the Culips English Podcast. Welcome back to Culips, friends. You're listening to Catchword, the series for intermediate and advanced English learners, where we teach you idioms, phrasal verbs, or expressions that will help improve your English listening and speaking. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Cassie. Hello, Cassie. Hi, Andrew, and hi, listeners. So, everyone, we've got a great vocabulary lesson lined up for you today. Andrew and I are going to teach you about two idiomatic expressions that we use to talk about the internet and social media. Yeah, everyone, that is right. I think this is going to be a fun episode. I'm excited about it. And the two key expressions that we'll be teaching you are doom scrolling, aka doom surfing, and to break the internet. These are really popular expressions these days. They're hot, 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 and we use them to talk about using the internet and surfing the internet. So we think they're important for you all to know. And in this episode, we'll break them down, tell you about what they mean and how you can use them. We'll get started with this lesson in just a moment. But before we do, guys, we want to let you know that there is a transcript and study guide for this episode available to all QLIPS members. We've designed the practice exercises that are in the guide specifically to teach you the important parts of this lesson that will help build your English fluency and help your English sound more natural. To learn about all the details and to become a QLIPS member and get the study guide, visit QLIPS.com. We also want to give a shout out to Klim, one of our listeners from Warsaw, Poland. Klim left us a five-star rating and an awesome review on Apple Podcasts. The review goes, thanks for your amazing podcast and for all the passion and hard work you put into it. I've tried listening to dozens of English learning podcasts and Culips is simply the best. You can improve your English, learn something cool about the world and have fun at the same time. The sound quality is stunning too. All music lovers gonna appreciate that. I always recommend Culips to my friends and they have never been disappointed. Keep going. We need to hear your pleasant voices more often. Wow, Cassie, doesn't that make you feel good when you read a nice review like that? Mm -hmm. So thanks for the kind words and encouragement, Klim. We really do appreciate it. Yes, and we want to give a huge thanks to all the Culips members that are out there supporting the work we do here and allowing us to keep making new episodes and English lessons each and every week. We really appreciate your support and couldn't do it without you all. And with that being said, Andrew, I think it's time to get started with today's lesson. <laughs> Let's do it. Cassie, we're going to go from the high of that really positive, awesome review that Klim gave us that honestly just put me in such a good mood. We're going to go from that review all the way to the totally different spectrum of uh, the universe. We're going to go from the high to the low, and we're going to talk about doom scrolling which is actually a really negative thing. I think all of our listeners will agree on once they understand what doom scrolling or doom surfing is. Now we'll talk about the meaning of this expression here in just a second, but maybe before we do, we should break it down exactly. So doom scrolling, doom scrolling. First of all, Cassie, could you tell us what is doom mean d-o-o-m doom means bad things are happening usually you hear doom and gloom yeah bad depressing things doom and it can also be a feeling like if you have feelings of doom it means like you're very very pessimistic about anything positive happening in the future it's also the name of an old computer game that I loved to play when I was a kid, but that's a little bit beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the meaning of doom. It's like pessimism, negativity, that kind of negative, bad 
feeling or emotion. And what about scrolling? Scrolling. S-C-R-O-L-L-I-N-G. Scrolling. What is that? Scrolling is when, it depends what technology you're using. If it's a computer and you're using your mouse pad, it's when you swipe down or scroll the mouse down so you can look through your social media feed. Um, likewise, if you swipe your thumb on your phone and, you know, go through the, the news feed. Exactly. So it just talks about navigating through a website or navigating through a social media app as you go down the page further and further. This motion that we make is called scrolling. So there's doom scrolling. There's also doom surfing. And this kind of surfing is not the type that you do on the ocean with a surfboard. It's about surfing the internet. So scrolling and surfing in this context just mean spending time on social media or spending time on the internet. So if we put this all together then, doom scrolling and doom surfing, what do they mean? Well, they mean spending a lot of time endlessly looking at your phone or always looking at your computer reading bad news about the world. And usually I think people do doom scrolling or doom surfing at night before they go to sleep. You know, you should be sleeping, but you're just addicted to all the bad news that we see on the internet or all the negative stories that we read on the internet. Which is so good for your sleep that night. <laughs> yeah, horrible for your sleep, right? It almost puts you in a worse mood because you feel very pessimistic about the future because of all the bad negative news you're consuming. And then you're staying up late at night looking at the blue light from your phone and it just makes your mood terrible as well. So yeah, I think it's a very <laughs> apt description of uh, something that a lot of people experience these days, actually. Cassie, can you think of any examples where you've doom scrolled recently? Yeah, actually, I'm not a big doom scroller, but it happened to be yesterday of all times. <laughs> <laughs> what were you looking at? Well, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard uh, civil case is going on right now, and uh, it is intense. I usually don't care much about celebrities, but this one is such a big deal because, you know, usually when you hear about domestic abuse, it's the man being accused, but in this case, it's the woman. So it's getting a lot of social media attention and it's just all over my newsfeed. Yeah, it's hard to avoid these days. I actually spent a little time doom scrolling through that case as well. It's kind of interesting to see how it unfolds. And it's almost impossible not to do some kind of doom scrolling these days. Unfortunately, you know, with the pandemic and the economy and just different worries and concerns and conflicts around the world, it's hard to avoid bad news these days. So I think a lot of us can relate to exactly what this expression means. Why don't we take a listen to a few conversation examples with these expressions, doom scrolling and doom surfing. Let's do it. <sighs> I'm so tired today. I can't wait to go home and go right to bed. It's like 10 a.m. Why are you so tired? Were you up late last night? Yeah, and it's my own fault too. I just wasted time doom scrolling in bed. <sighs> yeah, I've done that before too. Makes me want to trade in my smartphone for an old flip phone. You know, that's not a bad idea. All right, listeners, in that example, we just heard two friends talking about doom scrolling. One of the friends was very tired because she spent all of last night wasting time lying in bed, not sleeping, but instead doom scrolling through her social media feed. And one of the friends commented, you know, if we used flip phones, then we wouldn't doom scroll. We could avoid that habit. And Cassie, I guess that's true, right? If we went back to like old 
phones before smartphones, then we could eliminate doom scrolling. So I kind of agree that maybe that's not a bad idea. Ah, you'd have to get rid of the whole internet. You could always access the computer for that. Yeah, there's always ways to cheat and find <laughs> find our way back to social media. Absolutely. Let's listen to example number two now. Sorry I'm late. Were you waiting long? Nah, just like 15 minutes. It's fine. I was just catching up on my Twitter feed, doom scrolling through all the latest news. Things are crazy these days, right? Well, we should hurry up to the theater or we'll miss the start of the show. Yeah, let's go. Okay, in this example conversation, two friends are meeting to go to the movies and one friend was a little bit late and while waiting for one friend to arrive, the other person spends their time doom scrolling on their Twitter feed, which is a popular social media platform. Exactly. And I tend to do this. This is one of my bad habits. If I have a couple of minutes to kill, you know, I'm waiting for a friend or I'm waiting for a bus, something like that. I'll open my phone and scroll through social media and look at all the bad news that's happening in the world. <laughs> Actually, Cassie, I recently signed up for a newsletter from the New York Times and they send it to my inbox every morning. And I know this is a bad habit. People say not to do this. If you want to increase your productivity and increase the quality of your life, when you wake up, the first thing that you shouldn't do is check your inbox. However, I'm not so disciplined. So usually the first thing I do is check my inbox and I read the New York Times newsletter that they send me every morning. And it's awesome. It's a nice summary of what's going on around the world. It has a focus on East Asia where I live. So I get updated with all these headlines from East Asia. It's awesome. But of course, it's the news. The news is always negative. It's always bad. It's always doom and gloom. So I kind of start my day off by doom scrolling. That's a horrible way to start your day. <laughs> yeah, I got to try and adjust that habit. It's not so good. <laughs> Cassie, we're going to transition to expression two now, and it has a different meaning, okay? It's related in that it's used to talk about the internet and some behavior and habits that happen on the internet, but it has a completely different meaning. So let's introduce it. The expression is to break the internet, to break the internet. And to break the internet means to post something could be to social media or to any website that just causes a huge viral reaction. So it becomes super popular. Many people see it. Many people hear it. Many people learn about it. Uh, any kind of thing like this could be, yeah, an Instagram post, could be a YouTube video. If it gets a ton of attention online, then we say, wow, that broke the internet. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why we originally came up with this expression to break the internet. Do you think it's because it caused lags back in the day when the internet was kind of slower? Yeah, I think so. I think it has to do with so many people visiting a website at the same time that the website actually goes down. So this doesn't happen too much these days anymore because we have better technology. But in the early days of the internet, it was quite common for websites to go down because they were inundated with traffic. Like so many people went to the website at exactly the same time that the website broke. It still does happen from time to time. Like I know when certain pop bands have concerts and they put all of their tickets, ticket sales, you know, all the fans will go to the website at the same time to try and buy a ticket and the website crashes. We could say, oh, they broke the internet, right? It feels like the internet is broken. In reality, it's only that website. But I think that is the origin of this expression. Cassie, I think we could say the Johnny Depp trial right now is breaking the internet, like you mentioned earlier. For sure. Should we listen to a couple of example conversations with this expression? Let's do it. Have you seen this video yet? 
It's the one about the little girl who's a slow runner. Oh yeah, it's so cute. I think everyone's seen that video by now. It totally broke the internet. It's so funny though. Should we watch it just one more time? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, listeners, in this example, we hear two friends talking about a viral video, a video so popular, they describe it as breaking the internet. One of the friends says that that video totally broke the internet. This just means that it's really popular and it's a viral video that many, many people have seen. Cassie, for listeners who haven't seen the viral video that was referenced in that example conversation, it's a really cute video that just came out of the UK and it actually is breaking the internet right now. It's, it's really popular. And a mom took the video of her daughter. Her daughter was in a race at, with other elementary school girls. So they're doing this running race and the mom's daughter is last in the race. Like she's well behind all of the other students. All the students go by in one group and then the camera pans right to the end of the pack, like way back. And that's her daughter. So she says, come on, you can do it. You can do it. And the daughter who must be only about six or seven years old, like they're really just little kids. She responds like, I'm trying. I just have little legs. Harbor, you can do it. I'm I got little legs. Oh. And <laughs> you know, she has a, a UK accent. It's very cute and hilarious. And the mom breaks out laughing because it's so funny to see her daughter try to run as fast as she can, even though her legs are so little. It's a very cute video that's breaking the internet these days. I definitely got to watch it. Let's listen to example conversation number two right now. Okay. Which photo should I post to my Instagram? This one where I'm wearing the white dress? Or this one where I'm wearing the red polka dot dress? Hmm. I'd say go with the polka dots. That picture is so good, you're going to break the internet with it. Yeah, I do look pretty good if I do say so myself. Okay, I'll post it now. All right, in this example conversation, a girl is debating which photo she should upload to her social media. Should it be the white dress or the polka dot dress? And in the end, her friend suggests the polka dot one. It makes her look really good. And he says it will break the internet with its popularity. Mm -hmm. It will be so popular on social media. It will get so many likes and so much attention that it will break the internet. Okay, just a figure of speech, just a metaphor for meaning that it will be very popular and potentially go viral. Finally, the last thing that I want to talk about here is something that we heard the character in that example say. She said, yeah, I do look pretty good if I do say so myself. If I do say so myself. I do look pretty good if I do say so myself. I do look pretty good if I do say so myself. Cassie, what kind of situation can we use if I do say so myself in? I like this expression. Very natural way to speak. Yeah, it's kind of a weird expression. But if you want to kind of brag about yourself without being braggy, without seeming too vain, you can say, if I do say so myself. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good at this. If I do say so myself. Or we could say... We think Culips is a really amazing podcast for learning English, if we do say so ourselves. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a way to brag about your skill or ability while at the same time kind of being humble, mm. even though you're still bragging. Yeah. It makes you sound charming. I, I like it, it's a very natural expression. Anyways, everyone, that was a little bonus lesson for you here right at the end of this episode. And with that, I think we'll wrap things up. So, of course, we hope that you enjoyed this one and were able to learn a lot with us today. 
And good job on getting in your daily dose of English listening practice. You're doing exactly the kind of thing you need to do to improve your fluency. So keep up the good work. So Andrew and I taught you two idiomatic expressions today that we use when talking about the internet. Now it's your turn to practice using these expressions, and you can do that by making some example sentences and leaving them on our discussion forum or the comment section on our website, qlips.com. If you enjoy QLips and find it useful for building your English skills, we'd love it if you could support us by leaving us a five-star rating and positive review on your favorite podcast app, by following us on Instagram or YouTube, or by telling your friends who are learning English to check us out. We'll be back soon with another brand new episode, and we'll talk to you then. Bye, everyone. Take care. Goodbye.